Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're going to talk about some easy ways to make sample instruments sound a little bit more realistic overall. Um, right here I have contact set up as a multi timbral instrument. So I have an example of a cello that has a really high velocity value at 127. Quantize really um, strict to the grid, so it doesn't quite sound as free as it should. And then I have an example of a more realistic cello sound with more velocity variations, some changes in quantization strength, etc. Whenever you have a multi timbral instrument though, it's hard to have separation from each of these MIDI channels because they're connected to the same software instrument. So if I wanted to mute one of them and not the other, it's more difficult unless I've configured my multiple outputs. However, our regions of MIDI data are still independent. So if I want to listen to my first cello example, I could just click on the second example's MIDI region and choose Control M to mute it. So now I'm just hearing one of them. So that's obviously quite an intense velocity level. All of these are at 127. It's quantized perfectly to the grid. And because a real live cello player would never play that perfectly, you know, same intensity every time, perfectly in time with a click, it doesn't quite sound as real as it should. Now, if we check out the second example, I'm going to click on the first cello's MIDI region and then mute it. That's Control M and then unmute the second one and play that back. This one has a little bit more of a free feel to it. It sounds a little bit more like a real player and that's because we have all of these velocity variations. The first one's at 85 for a velocity value seconds at 79, and so on. A good trick for this is to make sure that you don't repeat the same velocity value two times in a row. I've also utilized quantization strength for this, so if I command A to select all of these, and I'm just gonna zoom in so it can be a little bit more obvious, I can adjust this value here, which is strength. And as I turn that from 100% down to 0%, you can see that the MIDI values are moving. This is really cool because I played this in with my MIDI keyboard and by adjusting the strength, it will adjust how closely to the grid it's quantizing. So 100% strength means it's perfectly quantized to the 16th note grid that's set here. If I do maybe 89%, it only goes 89% of the way to the grid from where I played it. So this is really great for freeing up your MIDI to make it sound a little bit more realistic because obviously real players, they won't be playing perfectly on the grid. The one thing you want to be careful about with this is that your first MIDI note doesn't go before the um, first downbeat. So if I play this back now, it's not actually getting the signal from, um, from the MIDI data. So for those, I like to keep, you know, especially if you have one that starts right at the beginning of a bar, make sure that that's quantized pretty closely to start off the phrase. Another cool way to affect multi timbral instruments, especially when they're still connected to one software instrument track, is with MIDI Draw. And MIDI Draw is this little button up here. If I click on that, it will bring up some other information at the bottom. It starts off with note velocity, which we can already see clearly in the piano roll. But if we click on here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of other different uh, parameters that we can adjust. And these are what are called MIDI CCs, or continuous controllers. What they do is they change a parameter over time. Some of these are hardwired, if you think about it. Um, volume, for example, has a specific number associated it, with it, which is CC number 7. Um, but you can also map CCs to pretty much anything um, that can be controlled in a software instrument. Some of these, of course, are um, created with logic to be easily accessible. So CC number seven, which is volume, you can find right here where it says volume. And I can actually hit T to bring up my tools, choose my pencil tool, and create a little bit of a crescendo over time within the region itself. And as you can see, again, this will come up on the actual region. And if I want to do the same thing here and just give it a little bit of a fade out. Um, 
this will give it a little bit more of a feel like you're crescendoing and decrescendoing. Of course, you can make this a lot cleaner. I'm just drawing it in with the pencil tool just to show you how you do this. Um, now, volume is pretty self-explanatory because it shows up here, but if you want to choose another MIDI CC, for example, one that's maybe not already hardwired that Logic recognizes, choose Other, and it will bring up this little uh, MIDI draw window that will actually give you multiple different CCs that you can affect. So if you decided to map your MIDI controller to um, a part of contact and you want to automate that specific one, you can choose, for example, controller 30. Um, and that's, of course, if you know that controller 30 is the one that's affecting whatever it is that you like. Um, every MIDI controller will be different. Um, whenever you map MIDI or use MIDI uh, Learn, you're going to attach it to a specific MIDI CC number. Um, usually it will tell you which number you have chosen. So just make sure you keep that number in mind. And then you can click on it in this window and automate it further. So I'm going to go back to volume again. Um, some other important ones here that you see a lot of are sustain pedal. If you hook up a sustain pedal to your MIDI controller, then um, you're going to probably see if you use it the same sort of lines that show up on the region. So anytime you see those, you know that something is being automated in MIDI draw. So if I want to jump between multiple different MIDI draw automation windows, I can just click on this little button next to where it says controller, and I can jump around to whatever I have automated. Once again, this allows me to create a crescendo in this part without having to crescendo the entire thing, because as we know with the multi timbal instruments, these are connected. And this will give you the separation you need on the MIDI region level. 